My name is Rebecca Mickey. I am a Seattle-based children's sleep consultant and author, and I work with families who have children who are under six years old. Real broad range of ages and issues that I work with. I'm a gentle, no-cry sleep consultant, so I'm not advising families to leave their children to cry it out. It's much more gentle, hands-on methods that I use if I'm actually going to be doing any sleep training at all. This masterclass is all about what to do when your baby will only nap on you. And though it sounds kind of delightful that um, you have to sit down um, and snuggling with your baby is absolutely wonderful, it's kind of tough, isn't it? Because there's things that you need to do, like you may need to go to the bathroom or you may need to do some laundry or there's so many things that you may need to do and that can make this um, baby only napping on you, this double-edged sword that it's kind of nice and it's kind of lovely, but if you have other children, it can just feel that you just, it's really challenging. So I'm going to share the gentlest and easiest way that you can begin to have your child sleeping a little bit more independently. Now, this is not going to be just laying your child down and letting them get on with it. This is a slow sort of gradual way of having them sleeping that little bit more independently no quick fix when it comes to making any changes with sleep. So one, the first thing that we want to get started with is we want to work on one nap at a time because that just means that it's going to be a little bit easier. So we're going to start implementing some things with one nap. And generally the first nap of the day is the easiest one to make some changes to not had been too overly stimulating between waking up in the morning and going down for that first nap it's normally pretty calm fairly relaxed and so that can make then this a little bit easier and then we want to think as well about the way that naps naturally develop first nap of the day then the second and then the third so you're going to see this with this first nap of the day this is the one that's going to be developing first and this is where it's going to be easier to make some changes naps do begin to develop sometime between four and six months of age but that doesn't mean that there's nothing you can do to be lengthening out naps or having them a little bit more independently but that's when you may notice that things just get a little bit easier naps may naturally lengthen out but they may get a little bit easier if you're um within that time range there between four and six months of, of age. You want to make sure that the timing is right. So you're not trying to get your child down for their nap when they're too overtired or undertired. In that case, they are going to really, really struggle. So a child who is undertired is obviously going to struggle, struggle all asleep. And then they're going to wake up very quickly because they're not really very tired. If they're overtired, it's exactly the same. They're going to struggle to fall asleep, but what we often see with an overtired child is that they struggle to remain asleep. And any changes with you trying to lay them down, for example, is just going to wake them up. So you want to make sure that the timing is right. Um, and that obviously depends on how old your child is. If your child is around three months, you'll want to start with having a maximum awake time of an hour and a half. As we're getting to four months, you may want to start stretching that out to about two hours of awake time between each nap. And then when we get to six months, you can introduce the two, three, four routine. Two hours of awake, nap, three hours of awake, nap, four hours of awake, and then down for the night. Initially, you are going to need a little cat nap in your four hour stretch because it's too long initially. Uh, but that cat nap needs to be just long enough to keep your child going until bedtime. That's when we want a short nap is that cat nap. The other naps, we want longer naps. So making sure that you're sticking within your timings because that way we're going to be hitting a good time for your child going down. And that will then be easier for them to fall asleep, remain asleep, and for you then to have lay them down so they're sleeping a little bit more independently. We want to make sure that your child is nice and relaxed and unwound before you try and get them down for their nap. If they're busy hanging out, playing, 
and then we're suddenly trying to get them down to sleep they don't and they don't have much time to relax their brain their brain's still going to be in learning mode and then again they're going to struggle to fall asleep and remain asleep so you want to have a short nap time routine that is consistent so where you're doing the same thing in the same place in the same order whenever you're at home. Now, every person who's trying to get your child down for a nap can have their own routine and they need to be consistent with that. This routine needs to be about 10 to 15 minutes long. An example is you can um, go into the room that your child is gonna be sleeping in, close up the curtains, get your child ready. Maybe you're going to do a diaper change, put them into a sleep sack. You're gonna read a few books sing some songs and then work on getting them down to sleep. However that is, doesn't matter how you're getting them down to sleep, but you're always going to do that consistent routine. The consistency is what's relaxing. Your child knows exactly what's coming. They know that sleep is gonna be happening. We're not sort of surprising them with anything that's going to change and anything different. They know what's happening. Um, and then another thing that's gonna happen is the brain starts getting ready for sleep because of that consistency. The brain knows that sleep is going to be coming and that means then that it's already starting getting ready for sleep whilst you're going through your nap time routine. This nap time routine should be within your awake period. So if your child is awake for two hours and you have a 15 minute routine, you'll start your routine after an hour and 45 minutes. So you start getting them down to sleep at the two hour point. This should be then that you're hitting that right time for getting them down. Lots of times children will not show you that they're tired until they've got overtired. That's when they may start yawning, just start rubbing their eyes, is maybe when they're overtired. And so that can make sleep a um, bit challenging. So that's why we want to have our nap time routine within our awake time. So you start getting them down to sleep at the end of your awake time, hour and a half or two hours, um, or if you're going through the two, three, four at that point there. Now, one thing, I'm gonna just grab my fake baby here this is uh, Grantham. He is my uh, my fake baby. Um, and um, because I'm going to be showing you now how you're going to be helping <laughs> your child to sleep and how we want to make some changes there. So if you're holding your child up like this for their naps and you're holding them this way, um, then when you try and lay them down, that feels very, very different to them. Very, very different to them. And chances are they're just gonna wake up because sleeping this way where they are against you, they have pressure against their tummy, against their chest, they're being held. And then laying them down on a bed in a crib like this is really, really different. Um, and so that can be too big of a step for a lot of children. So you can still get your child down to sleep this way if you want to, but you may want to start trying to get them down sort of a little bit more where you're working on having them horizontally on you. So they're just going to be sort of the same as they are when they're in the crib. Then you can try laying them down even on your legs once they're asleep. So now they're going to be really getting used to laying on their back. You, they don't have any pressure then against their tummy and they're doing this whilst they're sleeping. So it's not necessarily that you're doing this to get them to sleep, but whilst they're sleeping, they're getting used to doing it this way. As they're going to be initially remaining in your arms, then you can help them back down to sleep if you need to. If you feel that they're stirring, which is when they move or make a noise, you can help them back down to sleep. You can move, you can do a little bit of jiggling, shushing, patting, whatever you need to do to help them back down to sleep. But they need to get comfortable sleeping this way and they're gonna do that initially on you. So now you've got your child down to sleep. They're used to sleeping this way and they're doing great. We want to lay them down at the right time. If you lay them down the second that they've fallen asleep, then they're just going to wake up. Um, any movement that you do, no matter how stealthy you are, is just going to wake your child up. It just does for all of us. So you want to make sure that your child is in a deeper sleep before you're going to attempt to lay them down. So they've got used to sleeping this way. You've got them down to sleep. You want to wait about 10 minutes before you're going to attempt to get them down either in their crib, the bassinet, on the bed, mattress, wherever it is that you're going to get them down. This way they've gone into a deeper sleep 
they will start to wake up a little bit because you're moving but because they were in a deeper sleep it's not going to instantly wake them up if they were in a light sleep they're going to start waking up and then boom they're awake again so waiting about 10 minutes is normally um, a really good time to do this you want to then stand up go to where walk to wherever it is that you're going to lay your child down and then you just want to wait a little bit so that it's not just sort of like a real quick movement into the into the crib you want to wait a little bit so that it's just a bit of a slower transition not very long it could be just 20 30 seconds but you're waiting there when next to the crib and then you're going to as stealthy as you can so as slow and steady as you can you're going to lay your child down once you've laid them down let's just pretend here that grantham is laying in the crib you want to keep your hands on now you can do this maybe with the hands um, on their chest, keeping them there. You can do two hands on if you want to. You may want to hold your hand, um, your hand against their arms so they don't start moving their arms around. It's kind of like you're a little bit of a swaddle, just helping them as they're transitioning to getting comfortable on that surface. And you really want to be that sort of quite a bit of pressure on there so that they can definitely tell that you're there and then we want to make sure because they, the movement has started bringing them into a lighter sleep that they start going back down into the deeper sleep so that can be that little bit of movement a little bit of a jiggle you can shush um, anything that you need to do there to help them back down into a, a deeper sleep you'll know you're just with trial and error how long that is going to take for you to do that um, and then you need to remain consistent. And then another thing you need to do is celebrate every little success. They napped for seven minutes independently, and that is a great start, and it is worth celebrating. Then for the rest of the naps that day, you may want to try for another nap, being a little bit more independent, but you don't need to. You can then just help your child to sleep however that they need to sleep in the carrier when they're um, in the stroller just holding them is all completely fine and then the next day you're going to do the exact same thing with the first nap and then you're going to try again and then you may get who knows 10 minutes you may have 10 minutes of them sleeping independently practice makes progress so the consistency here is really really key now what you're going to notice is after a, about a week everything just goes like it was on day one with a real short period. Nobody knows why there's a regression around a week after we start making some changes with sleep, but this throws people so much because you think, great, this is beginning to work. And then by about day five, you feel like, oh, this isn't working. That's completely normal. As I say, there is this regression that happens around a week after we start making changes with sleep. So that could be anywhere between night five and night 10, day five and day 10, that you're going to feel that you are right back to square one. Keep going, keep going. It doesn't mean that things are not working. It's just this darned regression that is just kind of sent to test you. You may also find that you seem to be doing two steps forward and one step back really normal whenever we're working on anything sleep related that we will start making some progress and then you feel that huh now we're not so you may have seven minutes day one ten minutes day two and two minutes on day three just keep going the more consistent you are the easier it is for your child working on this one nap at a time is completely fine even though that is not consistent obviously the naps are really different but they develop individually. So we can work on them this way, where we're working on that first nap and then the second and then the third. Don't feel you have to perfect your first nap before you can work on any of the others. You don't need to. Once you feel that your nap is good enough, and that may be that your child is napping for 30 minutes, that may be that they're napping for 45 minutes. Who knows, it could be that they're napping for an hour and a half or two hours. When you're comfortable, then you can get started doing the same thing for the other naps during the day. But it's not going to be that just by working on these things that your child instantly starts napping for the same duration as they do in the first nap. 
you need to kind of start again. We're now not introducing anything new. They're now used to sleeping on their back. They're now used to that transition. So it may be a little bit easier, but you may find that nap two and nap three start being really short to begin with. And then as they get more comfortable with it, begin to lengthen out. The timeline is normally a little quicker than with your first nap when we're introducing completely new things. So hang in there. This will get easier. This will get this will get much better. They will be able to nap more independently. So you want to work on all of these little steps, making sure that you've got everything in place. Slow and steady is really, really helpful here. Your child will begin to nap more independently. I guarantee. Um, I'm not going to tell you that you should enjoy every second of snuggling with your child because I know those snuggles are really, really lovely, but I know as well that you're probably feeling a little bit touched out. You just would like to have a little bit of alone time and you've got the dishwasher to empty and the laundry to do and you'd really love to take a shower. I completely understand those things. And so it is completely normal for you to want to have your child napping a little bit more independently whilst also enjoying those snuggles when you get them. Thank you so much for joining me for this mini masterclass. I will be back next week with another one. You take care.